right, uh, for chapter 8, uh, there's no title. Uh, it doesn't say chapter 8. Uh, again, the file converted all incorrectly. Again, you can read on your own, or if you prefer, I'll be reading this aloud, and you can follow along with the mouse cursor. Uh, the years of Robin Island never broke Nelson's spirit. He never stopped believing that South Africa could change. He exercised each morning and read every morning. He studied law through the, uh, through the mouth. He learned African art history and language. The darkest time for him in prison was when he was forbidden to study. This lasted four years. But Nelson was determined and he passed his intermediate law exams when he was 45 years old. There was one joyful thing about prison life, friendship. Prisoners were forbidden to talk, but they found ways. They whispered as they worked in the quarries and passed secret notes hidden in the uh, dirty dishes. They even organized to work slowdowns and went on hunger strikes. Mandela might be in prison, but he was still a tree shaker. Of all his friends in prison, Walter Sisulo was the person he relied on the most. Sisulo was a person sounding bored. He discussed all his ideas for achieving black equality with him. Mandela once said, We walked side by side through the valley of dead, nursing each other's bruises, holding each other up when our steps falter. Mandela also wrote, a 500-page autobiography on smuggled paper. He buried the, co the pages wrapped in plastic and hidden in cocoa containers all over the prison courtyard. He encouraged other prisoners to study and learn out too. And although Nelson was a leader, younger prisoners were amazed at his humility. Prison life was very difficult for Nelson. When illness prevented him from working in the quarry, he was locked in a wet, cold, solitary cell apart from his friends. All he was given to eat was rice and water. Meanwhile, Oliver Tambo was still traveling around the world, telling everyone about Mandela and the fight against apartheid. He met with civil rights groups and government leaders. He set up international chapters of the ANC. World leaders who recognized him as the face of the new South Africa began to call for Mandela's release. Tambo also organized revolutionary fighters from uh, training camps in nearby Tanzania and Zambia. He moved the fighters to Angola on the border of a province called by, by, controlled by South Africa. This sent a message to the white government of South Africa. The ANC was willing to go to war. In 1976, the Minister of Prisoners offered to reduce Mandela's sentence if he will support the government's latest project, the Homeland System. They hoped to use Mandela's influence to support their own agenda. Mandela said no. The government tried to tempt him with better deals if he abandoned his friends. Again, Mandela said no. Mandela was 58 when the government passed a law declaring that all schools had to teach difficult subjects like math and science in the African's language. Most black children couldn't even understand Africans and had to come to think of, of it as a language of their oppressors. So how did they have a chance of learning anything? Once again, the government was finding ways to further deny black students a decent education. Uh, again, the file got corrupt, so unfortunately, this uh, will not be available for all of you. Um, right here, you have a map of South Africa, uh, and your key right here, this is the homeland of South Africa. And you can see that there's a division in South Africa with the uh, Africans and whites being separated. And this is a, a, a illustration of, of in South Africa of civil disobedience, Africa for Africans. Uh, freedom in our lifetime, and his release detains uh, reference to Mandela. Parents joined the fight. The fire of protests led in Soweto spread to other townships. The riots went on for 16 months before they were crushed. Nearly 1,000 people died and 5,980 were arrested. The police did not lose a single man. On Robin Island, the, there were so many new prisoners that it was easier to keep everyone locked in their cells rather than make them work. However, it did not matter how many civil rights leaders were sent to prison. New leaders such as Steve uh, Bickle always came forward to take their place. Bickle established a health clinic and com community programs as well as classes in practical skills aimed at making uh, black South Africans independent. Steve Bickle was arrested several times for his work. In 1977, he had been in police custody for 25 days when police and now he had died in his cell from going on a hunger strike. A hunger strike is when someone refused to eat, uh, to protest and injustice. The truth was Biko had 
being beaten and then left to die chained in his cell. No one was uh, ever charged with his murder. Police tried to prevent people from attending Steve Buco's funeral in King Williamstown in Eastern Cape on September 25th, 1977. But 20,000 black citizens and many white people too came to pay, uh, pay their respects. The United States and 12 other Western countries sent representatives to attend. Protesters in other countries wanted their governments and other institutions to stop trade with South Africa. The pressure on the white South Africans was mounting. Nelson Mandela was a symbol of hope for a better South Africa. He was best known as of all the activists. In 1980, the Johannesburg Sunday Post, a black newspaper, printed a petition to release him. The headline read, Free Mandela. Um, and again, the file was all corrupt. You can't really see it as much. Uh, will the government listen? Okay, And that will take us to chapter 9. All right, that concludes the lecture part of the lesson.